Welcome to MMA Heat, the show that celebrates heart, endurance, aggression, and technique in MMA and in entertainment. I'm Karen Bryant. We're coming to you from the Samurai MMA Pro Show in Culver City, California. We'll be bringing you action from this show on our next episode. But tonight, we've got a lot of things coming your way. The stars of Never Back Down 2, Michael Jai White and Scotty Epstein, are going to talk to us about how to make a legitimate fight film. We're also going to get a killer choke technique from Scotty. And we'll hear from UFC middleweight Jared Hammond on his very own line of wines. But we're going to get things started tonight with Mac Danzig. He is a UFC fighter who is known for his willingness to go to war in the octagon. Two times he has won fight of the night, one time KO of the night. The thing is, out of the octagon, the guy is quite an amazing photographer. We talked to him about why it's so great to celebrate that art form along with mixed martial arts. So we're a month out from your fight. Yeah. So talk to me about your camp. How does your camp work? How intense are you these days? When do you, you know, really ramp it up? Or are you the type that just starts out hard? How does it work? Um, well, like usually at about the eight week mark is when I start really taking things seriously yeah. and start to clean up my diet and then also start to just uh, stay on the training, thinking about technique, make sure that I'm in the gym every day. Uh, six weeks out is when it starts to get a little bit harder and I push up the intensity. And now weeks four, three, and two coming up are gonna be the hardest weeks. And uh, that's when the sparring is as hard as it gets. That's when the uh, strength and conditioning is as hard as it gets. And uh, that's when I'm not really taking any days off. Even if I kind of feel like I, I need it, I won't take an extra day off. So, um, you know, just doing that and uh, staying focused yeah. mentally. I want to talk to you about your photography too. You're very, very good. Uh, uh, no, I mean, really, 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 really good. Uh, my mom is an avid photographer as well. We go oh, for the cool. dark room in the house and everything. Excellent. So Excellent. Um, I believe I have a little bit of an eye for it. Nice, nice. Um, how do you, how do you see the two worlds going together? Do you feel like your art and your fighting come from the same side of the brain? Do you feel that it's engaging opposite sides of you? I think it's, I think it's a, it, some of it is the same in, in the, from the artistic standpoint, from the creative standpoint, because you can be artistic and creative, obviously, in mixed martial arts, and um, at the same time, though, I feel like, like they're, they're separate in the way that, um, uh, for me, photography is, is that chance to get away from the competition mindset and just to get in tune with nature. And, you know, the subject matters that I like are often like wildlife and nature and things like that. And uh, in, in order to do that, I've got to travel to places that uh, there's not a lot of people around. And uh, it, I think that that really is, is, is a good yin and yang mm -hmm. thing, if you will. <laughs> you know, like it, that side is necessary. And then also the fighting side is necessary and they help balance each other out, yeah. I think. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's great. It's just... I don't want to say it's surprising that somebody who's a scrapper could be so talented in something else, but I think it is—it's a—it's a very pleasant surprise to find to find the. Yeah, artistic. I think it's just whatever you like, whatever you're really interested in. I mean, some guys that are fighters are really interested in Girls. video. No. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> right. a lot. Of, yeah, a lot of a lot of them, and um, you know, it's not that I'm not, but I'm not into video games. I know a lot of guys that are just in like their math at video right. games they're almost as good as the professional video game players right. and it's like well like you know if you if you like it okay and and that just goes as, as an example to show that um, if you really are passionate about something and you enjoy it and you put a lot of time into it you, you're just gonna you're gonna get fairly proficient with it and I, I guess that's uh, what happened with photography but what's what's cool about photography with, with me is that I'm not really pushing it real hard as a career or a job right now. So I'm just still enjoying it in that in that innocent, pure way. Mm -hmm. So that's that's uh, that's one thing that's really awesome for me is I don't have to worry. You know, fighting became a job mm -hmm. and it became the only way that I can support myself and my kid. And um, 
once that happened, that's when the pressure came. But uh, you know, photography is still something I do just because I like to do it. So it's uh, that's definitely <laughs> necessary in my life to balance things out. Yeah. Cool. Well, you are very good at it. So uh, so I guess when the fighting is done, that's maybe something that you would do, though. Maybe. Yeah. You know, maybe running photo tours where I take people out into the field and that's and cool. show them how to do things that that could work. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. It, it's it's definitely a possibility. Plus, well, you can defend everybody, too, if a situation arises with a bear. Oh, yeah. uh, no. <laughs> like, even the nose is what I've always heard. Punch no. a bear in the nose, and you run like hell. No, no. I'm not, nope. I'm not messing with the bears, no. <laughs> right. Mac definitely has solid photography technique, and I am really hoping to have one of his pictures in my house very soon. Well, don't go away. When we come back, you'll get to know the stars of Never Back Down 2. And Bryant welcoming you back to MMA Heat. Still to come, you'll learn a choke technique from side control. But right now, it's time to get to know Michael Jai White and Scotty Epstein of Never Back Down 2. This film is a sequel to the 2008 picture, and this time the story revolves around four fighters who are training for a tournament who also find out they've got to fight a traitor in their midst. We talked to Michael and Scotty about how important it is to make a legitimate fight film. All right, Michael, can you give us the 15, 20 second breakdown of, of what the film's about? Well, um, Never Back Down 2 is about these uh, four guys who are learning from this, this kind of crazy instructor. And, and uh, they want to, they turn out they, wa they want to compete in this thing called the beatdown. Yeah. All right, it, it, that comes up and, and their interests start to, to build about winning this tournament. Right. And so this guy trains them, this okay. guy. Well, you know that the MMA audience can be cruel. I know you've seen the forums. I know, I mean, I mean, they can be brutal. So oh, yeah. you know that the fight scenes in this are going to have to be top notch because people Absolutely. will critique you for that. So um, how did you guys choreograph this? And, and, you know, how did you make sure that the fight scenes look legit? Well, absolutely. I mean, well, I mean, I, I really because we didn't have the budget of the of the first one. It's okay. like a, not even a quarter of the budget of the first. What we were gonna do to compensate is to make sure that there's reality in there. Be, me being a martial artist, I was gonna make sure that we're gonna have martial arts represented truly. Yeah. You know, and so I mean, we've got you know, we we got all the disciplines, a lot of disciplines in there, uh, really represented. We have four different characters, and you have the teacher who's a, you know, to the heart, mixed martial artist. I mean, mm -hmm. very much like myself, I started out, I started out in jiu-jitsu first, actually. Yeah. Then I was boxing, did Kyokushin, did a number of uh, mm -hmm. disciplines. Uh, so the characters, the teacher's based on, you know, yeah, my yeah, character right. a bit more. I asked the same question to Michael, but you know that the MMA fans can be so hardcore. So in your mind, when you guys were doing the fight scenes, what were you doing to ensure that they looked realistic and legitimate? Well, um, I winded up choreographing the fights. There, there is uh, Arnell, who's the main choreographer, and then, then he had me as his, his side guy. Yeah. So I controlled most of the stuff on the ground, and then when it came to my fights especially, I was like, I'm not throwing a bunch of hooks. <laughs> you know, I'm not doing that. It's not going to be a haymaker. I'm yeah. not doing it. Yeah. I was like, get the cameras right. I'm throwing straight punches, doing proper takedowns, yeah. and doing submissions on the ground. So I, I, don't, I wasn't ever going in with the intention of, you know, crouching, tiger, hidden dragon. Mm -hmm. We're not flying in the air, spinning. Yeah. There is capoeira, but mm -hmm. we've seen that in fights. Yeah, we've exactly. seen it work. We've seen doing crazy stuff and guys getting knocked out. Like, okay, it works. It's legit. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to argue with that. I'm not going to do it. I don't know how to do it. I spin around twice. I get dizzy and want to vomit. So it, 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 that's not for <laughs> me. But what I did was I brought technical things that I use, that guys that I train with use on the ground to these fight scenes. I try to use the cooler of the stuff, mm -hmm. you know, um, but that's what I did. If things don't get put on right, blame the editor. Yeah. You know, if you see like, wait, how the hell do you get into a triangle from there? That's not my fault. I did it right. I taught it right. We shot it right. right. Yeah. Are there some moves, specific moves from 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 any fighters that we would know that you specifically said, ah, oh, I gotta get that in? Like, you know, I don't know if there's gonna be a Showtime Pettis kick in there or anything like that. But you know, have you seen anything recently that you thought that that inspired you? There are a number of things that we did in this movie. That if anyone's a real fan of MMA and they have a memory, they're gonna be like, wait, that's from that fight. Wait, that's from, I'm not gonna say what they are. All right. Have fun figuring it out, but most of it's like, yeah, all right, that's from that fight. How'd you get Leota in the movie? Well, see, one of the things is like, Leota is it, like, it, it was something, we were, we were always planning to, to yeah. you know, train and you know, my schedule and, 
in his schedule, I was going to train with he and, uh, and Anderson Silva. Yeah, of course. Uh, and being that I have a real kinship with Leoto because we very, we're very similar. We fight very similar. Yeah. And being from a you know traditional Japanese karate background mm -hmm. and branching off of that, uh, you know, I, I think I thought he was a great representative for for someone to play my uh, comrade mm -hmm. because it's like you know it shows the their their history of of their foundation, what, mm -hmm. what made them mm -hmm. uh, great in the, their martial art. And so he and I spar, we, we spar unchoreographed. We just, nice. we just go at it. And you know, it was a re really a lot Keep of fun. Keep your hands together, you gotta watch out. Well, I was gonna say, because you guys have both worked with Seagal too. Now don't lie, do you know that the Seagal thing is the real connection that you oh, have between no. you, Anderson, and Lyoto? Because oh. you were in exit wounds. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, this yeah. is a whole. I, whole did, thing. I did actually three things with Seagal. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I choreographed for Seagal way back in the day. I, you know, I was. I mean, he used to do these Nissan Soup commercials for Japan back in the day. Yes. You know, and I'll provide that uh, picture. Like, I would like that. Uh, with, with much skinnier Seagal. And, yeah. You know, me. <laughs> well, we were both skinnier at the time. But um, I did that. I did uh, exit, uh, uh, exit wounds. Yeah. But before that, there was um, On Deadly Ground. Oh, movie that, that I he, called that one On Shaky Ground. I wasn't. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's the one that Seagal, yeah. <laughs> Seagal had. Um, he, he directed that one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and uh, I like Seagal. Yeah. I'm just busted on him. I, yeah, I, yeah, he, he's he's an interesting guy. He's a good guy. He's a good yeah. guy. Well, I wish you the best of luck with it. I think that, you know, the more the more we can have MMA, you know, obviously now with the Fox deal, it, mm -hmm. it's becoming more and more mainstream. We talk about that. But, you know, I know you're a solid fight fan. I see you with the fights all the time. Oh, I know yeah, yeah. you've been down for years. Yeah. Um, I just think it's great that we can find new ways to integrate MMA into, into film and, and, you know, into the mainstream uh, uh, lifestyle. So, yeah, yeah. Nice well, work. Well, thank you. Never back down three, though. It's going to be a story about a reporter, a feisty reporter. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Michael. <laughs> okay, hey, we, we work on it. I know, I'm saying. <laughs> and then she gets in and she and she's pissed at all the other reporters because yeah. uh, whatever. And she so, starts like, whooping reporter. Yeah, ass. you know I could do it too because I trained so. That's another story for another right. time. We'll work on that. All right. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> Make sure you stay with us because Scotty will be showing us a killer choke technique from side control. Up next, though, middleweight Jared Hammond tells us how he got his own line of California red wine. Welcome back to MMA Heat. I'm Karen Bryant with you, coming to you from the Samurai MMA Pro Show. We'll bring you the action on our next program. Still to come on this show, you'll learn how to finish a fight from side control. But right now, it's time to spend some time with Jared Hammond. He is a UFC middleweight known for having a ridiculous amount of heart in the octagon. He recently launched his own line of messenger wines. And we talked to him about how the relationship with the winery evolved and what the heck teammate Vladimir Matyshenko had to do with the whole deal. Well, I do want to talk about something new that you're doing, something a little bit different for MMA fighters, and that is that you're releasing your own brand of wine. Can you tell me how this even came about? It's actually cool. I always tell people it's the closest I'll ever get to being on a Wheaties box. Yeah. So, like, you know, so it's cool. But uh, actually, Vlad, Vlad hooked it up um, when I fought Rodney Wallace. He met, he met this person, part of the Hill Family Estates Winery, and uh, they got to talk and found out they did these wine staining projects. Like, they stain uh, the surfboard with a wine stain, and they come out with a, a wine called the Pipeline, or they, they wine stain boards or whatever. So Vlad's like, well, you should stain Jared's shorts because I always wear white shorts in my yeah. fights. Um, because, and it's for a reason because like, I like having the blood on my shorts. It's kind of a weird yes. thing, kind of fun. But uh, so Vlad's like, you should do a wine after Jared and, and stain his shorts. And sure enough, you know, after a long process, that's what happened. And uh, they have uh, some fight stains, uh, some, some stained shorts uh, with a wine stain that looks like blood. So it's kind of a, kind of a, kind of a sick, weird thing, but, <laughs> but uh, it's cool. <laughs> but that's good. And, 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 and to carry the theme a little bit more, it's, it's, um, is it a very sanctuary? Sanguiny wine, because I, I, I like a good deep red. You know, is it is it got that? that it's a, it's a Merlot and a Cab uh, mix. Nice. And uh, it is awesome, uh, awesome. I'm not a connoisseur, right. but the wine is really, really, really good, and uh, I love it. So. Yes, very, very deep red wine. Right. Well, it's interesting too. I mean, wine is. Um, generally thought of as a, as a more classy affair. It is kind of a nice intersection of, of MMA and, and, you know, a little higher echelon uh, <laughs> thing there, there instead of just, you know, putting your name out on a... Yeah. 
It's it's, 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 it's an interesting mix. And mind you, I'm from wine country, yeah. lower wine country, past Robles area, Tascaro, California. And uh, so, you know, it's an interesting mix, um, MMA with wine. And I think it's really, really cool to, to mix those those demographics and those those areas and different, you know, cultures and whatnot. And uh, it's just cool. It just shows, you know, how the UFC and MMA can get different mainstream in different areas. And uh, it's cool. It's very right. So you say you're not really, you know, connoisseur of it, but, but you know, over the, over your times, is that, is that what you drink at? On the oh, no, I, I, meaning I love it. I'm just so yeah, simple. Just, I don't know oh. the difference. <laughs> okay. I'm like, oh, that tastes good. Cool. Oh, that. Well, then, then they explain. I'm like, I don't know what you just said, but it tastes really good. But it tastes really good. Have you ever done the wine tours or whatever? Where you, yeah, you no, but we, but we, mind you, <laughs> we're drinking beer usually and then drinking wine. So, like, in, in my, with my friends. But uh, I'm definitely not a connoisseur. I just I think it all tastes good. So. Uh, and describe the, the, I think the label of it as a, has you, right, with your hands raised? Yeah, it has me just as a silhouette. Uh, with my hand raised, because I don't like I don't like you know uh, pictures of my in my face or whatever. So like when they did the silhouette, I was like that is cool. I like that, so it's pretty cool. Nice, it's pretty sweet. Now I know you're a spiritual man. Any chance that you can get this uh, somewhere for your for your communion wine? <laughs> 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 get a little blessing on there. You know what I'm saying? Dude, that Work that out. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually funny. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty uh, it's pretty good wine, but uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Possibly. All right, great. So MMA, he's getting a, getting a bottle or two. Yeah, right? heck yeah. We got to definitely share a glass for sure. For definitely. Sure. And Vlad, so. I'm I'm surprised. Is is gonna is Vlad gonna get his own vodka soon? <laughs> how is that? He not needs happening? to. He needs to. I don't know how yet that hasn't happened, but nor do I. We shall see. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck with it, Jared. Thanks, Karen. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, if the wine packs a punch like Jared does, it's gonna be a knockout. That was such a bad pun, but I couldn't resist. And I can't wait to try the wine either. Well, stay with us because when we come back, we'll hit the mats with Never Back Down 2's Scotty Epstein. Welcome back to MMA Heat. Karen Bryant with you, and it is time for some technique with Scotty Epstein of Never Back Down 2. Now, Scotty has competed professionally as a fighter, and he is also an instructor at 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu West LA. He's also famously known for being Chuck Liddell's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu coach. Well, he showed us a very sweet move on how to go from side control into a choke. Take a look. Um, most of the guys have trained with me before know that I like to have a head and hip. If I'm blocking his hip, he can't recover his half guard or guard. If he tries to turn into me, it's just blocked by my arm, and that's the reason I leave it there. People like to do this, but then if he's slick, he's in. You know, even if I got good pressure, he can jailbreak. He can do a couple of things there. So I like to stay here. But I want to go, I want to give myself a little more room, a little more options with this. So what I like to do, depending on where this arm is, if he's just like that, that's fine, because I'm just going to bring my left leg in turning my hip towards his elbow and then I'm going to use my hip bone to slide up and then slide my knee up to his head. Now when I've slid my knee all the way up to his head, I'm trapping this arm. This is a line of defense for him and it's gone, it's mine now. Okay, I'm not going to submit him with it right now or anything, but I'm taking this arm away because if the arm's in and he pushes across my hip, how I teach, and he pushes me away, now he has room. Even if I'm blocking, it's still going to give him room to push me away. My base is taken off a little bit. So again, I'm here with my head and hip control, and I feel where his arm is, and I turn my hip down and slide my knee up, trapping his arm. So I'm trapped now. It's good. But I can slide this under his armpit. If not, don't worry about that. From here, now that that arm's trapped, his whole agenda, his whole objective is to get that arm back, otherwise he's not getting out. He's stuck here. It's very difficult for him to go anywhere. I'm going to take my right hand out from uh, under his leg, and I'm going to grab wrist control and lock my elbow. Okay, I don't want to bend. If I'm bending, then we're fighting. Okay, I don't want to do that. If I lock my elbow and just lean, there's no fight for me there. Okay, I've blocked it out. He's not going to go anywhere. Next step, my left foot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, windshield wiper it just like that. But see, I did that so that I don't move my knee and give him room. A lot of people get confused. They try to turn and then that arm is free. I don't want to free that arm. I want to control that arm. So my, my, my knee starts here, my foot starts here, and then I windshield wiper it in. Okay? Still trapping that arm, still trapping that arm. Both arms are trapped. I'm going to get up on the toes of my right foot, and all my weight's more going to be on my left elbow and my left knee. And I like to swing, it, it's the, however you're comfortable, I like to swing my right leg all the way over my right arm and grab my ankle. 
like so. I've grabbed my ankle, I pull it in behind his head and neck, and I want to get this foot behind his knee, but it's kind of difficult. So I fall on my right forearm, and I'm going to get on my left toes, just turn up like this, but see my base is on my right elbow, my right knee. Now it's very easy to get this foot, my right foot, under my left knee, because all i got to do is swing my left like that. Now that arm is exposed, that head is exposed. Let's finish the triangle choke or the arm or both. Depends on your mood, do them both at the same time. So again, this is great control right here, but I want it to be better. So I'm going to slide my hip inwards, see it's like I'm facing the mirror. Get my hip bone under his elbow, slide my knee up. Keep that locked. It's a lot harder for him to get his arm out now. From here, my right arm is going to come out. I'm going to grab that wrist, pin it down and lock my elbow. Okay? Elbow is locked. He can't. Try to move your arm. It's not going anywhere. Now I'm going to windshield wiper my left foot. Like so. See, my knee does not move. I don't give him any space. I want my knee touching his head, my elbow in between my knee and his shoulder. A windshield wiper. Get up on the right toes. And like before I said, I go over my arm with my leg, but some people can get in between there under their own armpit. I just, it's faster for me to go over my arm. So I come here. Caught that. I'm going to pull through. See that? See that? Good. Okay, fall on my right elbow. Get on my left toes. Turn up. That's all. I'm just turning him up. Look how his body is down. But I'm not off balance. I'm not chilling over. Like, that's not going to work. You gotta be here. I'm gonna swing over. Look at my foot now. It's arched up. I'm not on my toes like this. My foot is deep. That arm is there. I can go boom. That arm's there. I can put it under. A double whammy. A deep hug if I want. If he rolls you somehow, you're still in a triangle, it doesn't matter. He's done. That one might take a little bit of practice, but it looks pretty effective. And I definitely loved the windshield wiper reference as well. Well, that does it for us here at MMA Heat. As promised, we'll bring you action from the Samurai MMA Pro Show on our next episode. I want to remind you to join our Facebook fan page and to follow MMA Heat and me on Twitter. I'm Karen Bryant. I want to say thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.